I'm on a mission to help high flyers just like yourself, who until now have let the fear of public speaking hold them back from making a bigger impact. Join me as I find out the secret source from the world's leading speakers to make your speeches more interesting, enjoyable to give, and impactful for your audience. That's the mission, and this podcast will get you there. My name's Victor Ahipeni, and this is the Public Speaking Secrets Podcast. Speaker Nation, what's happening? Welcome to another episode of Public Speaking Secrets. I'm your host, Victor Ahipeni, and today we've got a a high-energy theatrical superstar, Ariane, and she is... uh, going to we're going to delve into kind of the theatrical side which um yeah i've got some cool questions or hopefully they're cool uh i've got some questions that are that are on my mind uh in regards to the theatrical side when it comes to public speaking Uh, and then we're going to have a look at maybe the storytelling and and the ted space as well if we've got time so welcome to the show yeah thank you very much i'm very excited thank you for the invitation so you've got 20 years of you know, the theatrical side of things, helping people you know, in, in the public speaking space as well. What I want to kind of delve into first is you know, I, I talk to lots of different speakers and speaker coaches and everyone's got their own opinion on where things sit, what matters the most. Is it the content that you deliver? Is it how you deliver it from you know, the vocal standpoint or the theatrical delivery? Uh, is that yeah you're yeah yeah, there's all these little different facets in regards so people get an idea where do you sit in that space yeah i know there's the obviously the the magical thing of you have awesome content with yeah a great voice and you you put on a a put on a performance for people but uh how do you feel the theatrical side of it fits into all of it so what i do is as definitely how you say something is more important Mm. than what you're saying because i can say something in a very rude way and if i say it in a very nice way people will get it and will accept it or understand it in a different way so i am for this how you say it is more important than what you say but what i do is everything in one I am I am a, a dark fantasy author, so I have the storytelling background. I am an actress and a theater director. And I am pretty good at understanding people's brands. That's why I called myself the branding director. Yep. So theater is nothing more than helping the speakers with acting hacks to deliver better. It's about to go inside of themselves and how to tell a story is how is your, how are you emotionally attached to something? Mm. It's the way you give it. So I work with method acting. And of course I tell people the posture, uh, take care of your posture, take care of your voice. I, as an actress, find it very, very important that you work on your voice. Yeah. Because that's what you speak using what sign language? Exactly. Uh, I mean, no, we're not all deaf. We don't all need sign language to communicate. And I am also very pro health. If you are a speaker and you use your voice to earn your money with it, if you were speaking every day or off on a stage, take care of your voice because it's gonna hurt, you're gonna hurt yourself Mm. eventually. So this is something that I really try to tell people. And so before we dive back into the the theatrical side of things, vocal health, what, that's easy to say. I mean, it's it's like saying, be be healthy with your body and um, people are like, yeah, yeah, is it high fat? Is it this, is it that, is it whatever? Um, For, and I mean, I guess the vocal health side of things is probably a new thing for a lot of people listening. They've gone, oh yeah, like, yeah, I don't necessarily wake up and start trying to be from the sound of music or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> so what, what would your, your hacks or your tips be for people who are looking to dip their foot into looking after their voice a little bit more? 
So when you are on stage, even if you have a mic, the way you send your voice is important. The more powerful your voice, the more powerful your presence and your message is. Mm. So start by learning how to identify your diaphragm, how to breathe from your diaphragm. This is the organ that actually helps you put your voice where it was supposed to be. We don't use our voices the way we are supposed to use our voices. Our voices land on the throat or on the chest mostly. We all speak too high. So I always say, you don't have to exercise every day. Mm. You don't and you shouldn't because you're gonna hurt your vocal cords if you stress them too much. I always say two to three times a week, 10 minutes exercises, it's enough. So you learn how to breathe and then you exercise your mouth to bring the voice to the front and you exercise your vocal cords to let them, to make them stronger and to be able to play a little bit with your voice because that makes everything a little bit more colorful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, I, I mean, I've heard some from some different people like Roger Love. Uh, yeah. He talks about your, your chest voice, your middle voice and your head voice. And, and yeah, he works with a lot of speakers, but he also works with, you know, the world's kind of best singers and things like that. And he said, once they learn to activate those three different areas, because a lot of them just go head to chest and they miss this gap in between. And then, yeah, it, he obviously has, has worked at that highest level with the singers and, and says, yeah, once they unlock it, their whole music range completely changes. And I mean, it's exactly the same for exactly the same for us as speakers is if we're not, you know, yeah, there's, there's so many interesting things like you whisper and you think that's easier on your voice, but it actually dries out your vocal cords and then you're it's really hard. It's yeah. really tough. It can hurt your vocal cords really, really bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we uh, flick back into the, into the theatrical side of things, you, you talked about, you know, uh, acting hacks for speakers. What does that kind of look like from, you know, let, let's, let's, we'll take this down a keynote presenter um, path. So someone who's more into the keynote presentations, I know it's pretty applicable for, for all types of talks, but that person who's up there, they've, uh, had that opportunity to you know, be that keynote presenter, what sort of things should they start off looking at if they're looking to you know, put that keynote presentation together from a, uh, from a theater side of things? So what I say is I see from experience and from observation that many speakers, even some that have a quite of experience, they talk to an audience. I, mm. I sit there and I, hear that they are talking to strangers and this doesn't get to me as an audience and as a listener i don't have the feeling they are talking to me mm. so i tell many especially i coach for tedx events officially from the inside and i tell tedx speakers because this is the tad thing and i always <laughs> say it's nothing it's nothing special i really think every presentation and talk should be like that yeah really that's that's the goal what do you think it's the key if you while you are rehearsing people i'm sorry i know many people don't like to to hear that but rehearse your talks hmm. <laughs> while you are rehearsing imagine friendly faces imagine something you would like to tell this to because if you're addressing this to friends, to people that you love, you automatically change your delivery. Yeah. And I am that I'm sitting here, I'm gonna feel connected to you because you are changing. It's a, it's a very, it's a very typical acting trick. You think, hmm. it's your thoughts. Everything you, you imagine is real. Let's say Pablo Picasso. I, I, um, I, f I find it really, often i mean we, when you get the kind of the crossroads of of acting and speaking is obviously there's a lot of a lot more memorization often in the acting side of things and you come across well yeah if, if you're on stage you you've got a script that you're following um yeah i i yeah i i mean i know tedx events can be the same as well but i mean if you're giving a, a 90 minute um keynote presentation you're going off 
ideally more of a guideline than trying to memorize uh, that 90 minutes. And I, I think I think where I see a lot of people, I'd be interested in your opinion, is uh, when they do try and memorize a speech, you know, when they're, when they're writing it down, that, that you know, the horribleness of they're trying to switch on two areas of their brain. They're trying to be like, yeah. how can I act this out? And how can I remember all the words? And then, you know, they freeze and then everything disappears. And, yeah, the words are disappeared and they're just like a deer in, in headlights. But it's, um, yeah, so, I mean, what, A, I'd like, like to know what your thoughts on that. And then, B, I guess the, what are the, the strategies that people can start looking natural with their I guess their movements on stage and, and things like that you know hand movements because uh, you, know, you see people in there they're having that cafe conversation whereas they should, yeah, be, yeah, yeah. should be having <laughs> that you know Italian mum telling off her kids conversation when they're on stage and um yeah so a couple of questions there and I'd, I'd just love to get your insight with it yeah absolutely with the memorizing thing people make it too complicated it doesn't have to be that complicated as i said i work a lot with tedx speakers and it's a ted thing that you memorize your talk because mm-hmm. ted wants to know exactly what are you yeah. going to say because ted has a lot of rules yeah. you're not supposed to be religious you're not supposed to be political you're not supposed to do this and that and so they will upload your talk you need to follow the script that you sent them <laughs> so this is this is the background what I always say is the first thing is what you said is the writing. If you really do have to memorize something, you write for a speaker, you write for listeners and not for readers. This is the first mistake everybody does. We write too complicated because when we start writing, we start writing for people that are going to read us, but that's not the case. People are going to listen to us. So I always say you write, either you write or you record it on the cell phone yeah. and you just speak it out or you write it and you wrote, I don't know, a paragraph to read it out loud. Mm. Respect your body. Does your mouth like these words? Mostly your mouth is going to tell you that this is not right. Yeah. This yeah. is not how you talk. This is a word that you would never use in a conversation, if it's formal or not. So this is something that everybody, please take care of. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. write for listeners. So you read it out loud, see if you really, if it's flowing the way you were supposed to, if it's not, delete. The delete button is your best friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Second this part is, is yeah. Second part is learn how to read it. There is a system to learn how to read. For example, most people, when they have a period on the sentence, we all go down with the voice, mm-hmm. and we go down with the voice, and we forget to put the meaning into these words. So this is the important part. Learn how to read. This is a, this is a very very typical acting hack. Once you learn how to read. You have the you have the right into I hate the word intonation, but you have the right intonation for it. And the whole memorizing thing is not as complicated as we think. Forget the words. Every single word is not that important. Important is that you get across the message that you want to get across. What a, one tip from me is never learn your text doing the same thing. For example, I'm sitting here, I have my text in my hand. And I'm memorizing it, memorizing it, memorizing it. You won't even realize that you are doing something like touching your hair or, I don't know, touching a pen or something. And your body is learning to attach that tax to the things that you're doing. Once you get on stage and you're doing something else, you forget the text. Mm. So to help your tax to get into your long-term memory, so you will know what you're saying and you won't forget it or you won't care if you forget it. Do different things. So you have your text a little bit, you learned it a little bit, and then start doing different things. The dishes, laundry, going for a walk, doing every time the different things because your body is going to learn much faster than your mind and it's going to trick you Every time, if you don't make that gesture that the body's waiting for, you're going to forget what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So don't give your body that chance. 
it, it's um awesome points and and you know from personal experience i spoke at a tedx event and it was so interesting afterwards catching out i was over i flew in for the event and so i hadn't been to the live rehearsals or anything like that oh, yeah. but there was two of us who had and it was just really interesting chatting afterwards because both of us never memorize if we're giving speak talks and and yeah you know, obviously we had to go through the the ted process and give them a transcript and then you know you have to be like this in rehearsal otherwise we'll cut you off the list and all those cool <laughs> things and it was just it, it was so it, i mean it was a great learning curve it was just so interesting because obviously they've got a brand to protect and they want quality they want to know that what you know because there was one guy that uh, you yeah, know they should have cut from our event um the day before and they had to basically put him on a on a chair, so he's sitting like a fireside talk, so he could hold a book because he couldn't memorize. He just he was a yeah. lecturer and he'd lecture every day, but he hadn't put the effort in. And a few of us were just talking how how much more difficult it is when you are going. I mean, obviously those hacks are, are perfect, and we all go through them, but just that exponentially harder to act, you know, rather than that developing that natural presentation style um and in, in, in between it which was you know one one lady had been like oh, yeah, i spoke to five thousand people last week and this was you know 500 people and she's like this was exponentially harder um because you know both of them you know what you're talking about but she said i had 90 minutes ted i had 18 to convey not the same message but a similar message so yeah it's about being concise and yeah, yeah everything the, but it's, 18 minutes, the 18 minutes are very challenging mm. you really need to get your message across in this small period of time a short period of time but what i see is the thing with the acting is acting it's becoming yeah so if you are pretending if you have to do something you're not acting mm. i like to say that 89 percent of everybody doesn't know what actors do and the other 11 percent are actors <laughs> And that is, that is, of course, not a real statistic, yeah. but it's sort of true because we consume actors' work every day, but we don't really know how they do that. Yeah. And we think that is pretending. We think we're playing other people, but it's not. It's to get you to get you know yourself and how to find yourself inside of these situations so that's why it's suitable for speakers and that's how i work with my speakers the speakers i work with have presentations the majority it's not a talk like tad yeah. they have their slides and they are talking about the businesses these are my clients what i do is to go inside of their heads and help them be more natural and have more fun while being professional and that's what acting do what acting does yeah with the uh, and i want to make sure we delve on this because you've obviously having worked with a lot of uh, ted speakers and, and it, a lot of it comes down to the ability to tell an effective story um in that like you know the, you're going to struggle to find too many talks that don't that have had, had a big impact that don't have a good story behind them um when it comes to storytelling what do you think the key components that people should be looking at when they are crafting a story to their audience or or either that or what do you think the biggest mistakes that you see people doing when they're trying to craft a story for any type of presentation the biggest mistake that i see is that people mix a story with facts yeah a factoid a fact something that happened to me it's not a story. Mm. A story has a structure. A story has a beginning. It has a middle. It has a climax. It has conflict. And it has a message. So it needs to have that structure. And of course, every single fact that we have, we've lived in our lives can become a story. But it needs to be structured. So I see a lot of people calling themselves storyteller. And when I watch the videos, it's not a story, it's a fact. Mm. So this is something that it's not happening a lot. I work from the acting perspective and I have my own system of creating presentations with my students, with my clients. 
And I always say, add some other senses to it. Because on theater, everything you do, you need to verbalize because people cannot see what happened before. They yeah. cannot see what happens outside of this house where the play is, is yeah. happening right now. So you need to verbalize everything. That's what I do. We analyze, we analyze the story and we put senses to it. That's where observation comes. This is an acting hack. You learn how to observe your body, to observe how you feel when you listen, when you hear a no, for example, when you're angry, how does your body feel? So we verbalize some things like that to activate the imaginations in the audience in a stronger way. Yep. I could feel the, the heart beating out of my chest. Yeah. As I walked up to it or, you know, I, I, my, my hands started to clam up or, yeah, I could feel the sunshine on the back of my neck. And those are the things that people can, like, I mean, you've probably heard the, the saying that yeah, facts tell and stories sell, and it doesn't matter yeah. doesn't matter what kind of presentation you're giving. You're trying to sell a message, whether it's a you're trying to get a credit card at the end of it, or you're trying to get a, create a movement. It's that facts. You know, people get bored with facts because you're just telling them, and no one likes being told what to do. And, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you can sell the idea and make people relate to you, I think it's yeah, it's awesome, and it, it's I, I love the way that you've described it as you know, uh, you know, bringing this, bringing in the senses into that story because I think it's once you do that, you can, like like you say, you can you can say less, uh, you can yeah, you know, say more in your story, but actually say less in your overall talk. And it's going to be way more impactful. It's going to be way, way more impactful. It's going to be way more impactful because it's something we really can create this in people's minds. If I tell you now not to think of a pink elephant, <laughs> it's the first thing that comes to your mind. Yep. <laughs> so this is, and this is how, how I tell people verbalize senses, verbalize the atmosphere. Why not? How does the air feel? Bring people inside of your story like the old storytellers the fairy tale storytellers we can put this inside of your business message in the stories of your every day why not mm. it can't be beautiful it can be poetical it's not because it's it's a regular day that it can be poetical and full of message that's it <laughs> and that's that's i mean i think that's the the key is i mean i i i hate it and i'm sure you do when you go somewhere and you see someone who's an expert in their particular area and they get up on stage and they just drown either drown you with information they uh you know, use it as a audible autobiography of themselves and how great they are and yeah you know, and they don't tell a single story they just yeah, they, they, they tell you this and that and something or other else and you're like oh my god you've got so much knowledge that no yeah, one's going to really seriously yeah and 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 i mean that's that's the the thing that i think it's the key component of everything is if you can craft and create a story you're going to be able to control that narrative you're going to be able to control that like you say the pink elephant you know you get to control the narrative of getting people's minds doing what they're going to do instead of you know them filling in the gaps and switching off and pulling out their phone and uh, anything like that and it's a fun experience it's an experience for everybody. Yeah. For yeah. you that you're telling and for people there, there and able to imagine things and get a little away from, from today and what happened yesterday and from the everyday life. That's what TV shows and movies and novels and theater plays do for us. Why can't a speaker do the same? At the end of the day, people with, you, with whom you connect better are the people you want to work with yeah so it, it doesn't matter <laughs> if you're business if you're giving a tat talk yeah exactly i think that's uh yeah a brilliant place to to not drown everyone in in, in too much information because if you can take those yeah the, the theatrical side of it into your talks and craft it in with a good story you're going to be so far ahead of most speakers that are going to step foot on stage um yeah the obviously you can start working on your vocals and things like that but if you i mean i think those just those two 
insights and obviously the tips that you gave off them are going to be hugely powerful for everyone out there listening. So yeah, I challenge everyone out there to start implementing those two things, looking at how you can you know, naturally yeah, put on a performance within your within your talks and how you can craft those stories and bring the senses into them because it'll be super powerful. So I want to thank you a lot for that. But if people want to find out more about you, get in touch, where can they go and what can they do? Oh, I'm pretty much everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at the branding director. You find me there. You can connect, send me a friendship request on Facebook, Ariana DeMello. You can't miss it. You've never <laughs> seen <laughs> It's written, <laughs> public speaking through acting and my Facebook page. I'm pretty much everywhere. Cool. So we'll link all of that at publicspeakingblueprint.com. And I appreciate you so much for this. And hopefully we'll connect on another episode or even better in real life. And, uh, and, great. and then we'll uh, go from there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If you want to fast track your confidence and impact with public speaking, then be sure to jump over to publicspeakingblueprint.com where there's an array of free resources to help you no matter where you are on your journey to becoming a more powerful speaker. And while you're at it, jump over to Facebook and join our free community called Speaker Nation where there's a ton of other like-minded individuals just like yourself looking to level up. Thanks for listening and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode.